My name is Dana Duarte and I'm from Colombia. My school is the Parsons School of Design and I study a master's in strategic design and management at Parsons. Uh, I've been following the Tishman Environment and Design Center for a lot of time, in fact, before coming to the U.S. And I thought it was a perfect uh, combination of social justice, environmental and sustainability practices with design. So I realized they had this Aaron Fen Fellowship opportunity and I decided to apply because I'm very interested in finding ways in which design uh, joins with business, but also with social matters. I think that's a very important combination that many companies and organizations right now need to have. I knew about the Tishman Center through social media and some research papers that I found um, because I've been following organizations that do design along with social justice and community development. So this is something that I'm very interested in because of my background in Colombia. I think here in Colombia, we have so many things to work around and I'm, I'm very eager to contribute in the same way to my country. So that's why I had this connection. I also heard from professors about the important work they do here and I wanted to be part of that movement. My project is a social incubator for people who was previously incarcerated because of possession of cannabis in New York. So basically something very interesting is happening here in the New York state. Two years ago, the state decided to uh, legalize adult of, of use consumption of cannabis. And with that legalization process also came a lot of new regulations, efforts from policymakers, social organizations, and different NGOs that are working around human rights in that, pro in that problem in particular. So what happened there is that the state decided to give licenses for dispensaries with priori priority in communities that have been impacted in by the war on drugs. Basically what they decided was, let's give these licenses of operation for people who have been previously incarcerated or which families have suffered some sort of trauma related to this, to this industry. So the project search um, to create reparations through entrepreneurship, which is basically say, okay, they have su suffered violence and trauma but they can also become entrepreneurs in a legal setting, setting, make a transition from an illegal context to a re regulated context, and access this new way of look at cannabis as a plant that can be medicinal, also for adult use, but that can also give them a better economic, economic status with their families. I feel that as Colombian, the legacy of this idea of a stigma around drugs, um, we were on the side, we continue to be on the side of producers, and here in the US, there is the side of consumption. So I firmly believe that the war on drugs is not working anywhere in the world, and there has to be a new approach to it that take into account communities, the people around it, the ones who have suffered also racial discrimination, prosecution, even the separation of communities because of this. Um, I think it's, it's a matter that has taken so many years, funds and efforts from so, so many people that I wanted to do something with it, with design, because creativity ca can generate a solution for these complex problems. I think that being a Colombian, um, by in fact, is um, hearing for instance, comments about drugs and things like that. There is a, a lot of a stigma around it. And sometimes the people who has been impacted by that are just invisibilized for many reasons, because of economical reasons, legal reasons. Um, so I think it's, it's something we as Colombians, and I know there are communities here in, in the US trying to fight about it, are trying to change the mind of people around it think about different ways to approach, approach public policy and integrate the community and the policymakers, basically the whole regulation system in a more creative way. Um, I think this is not a simple problem and probably my solution might not be the, um, the final uh, way to solve this, 
but it's a contribution to what has happened in my country and in other Latin American countries. So I feel compelled to work around this. In fact, this project grew a lot. Um, at the last two months, I made connections with the Colombian government, the Mexican and the Brazilian government. And a few days ago, we had a visit of a delegation from those three countries. Basically what we wanted to do, along with a philanthropy fund, was to show how the landscape has been working in here, what are the regulations, how is the market structure, because it has a very controlled and regulated structure in order to prevent big companies to take over that market and probably use this in a very irresponsible way, because at the end of the day, these are drugs. Um, but at the same time, to think about what has happened in other states, like California, Massachusetts. So what they did was to basically talk with regulators and other um, stakeholders in the industry to learn more about how to implement this in the other countries. So it's basically this project allowed me to make the connection of Latin American countries that I visited to the US and learn about the best practices, but also about the things we don't want to repeat because we have different um, context. Um, so yeah, the idea is to continue creating that bridge between both uh, regions and understand we are not just creating policy for New York, but it's also um, creating global impact in many ways about the different trade markets. There are at least two things that I find uh, more interesting about becoming a fellow. The first one is the opportunity to share with like-minded professionals that work in different aspects of a social impact, environmental justice. I was I had the opportunity to share with anthropologists, sociologists, and people that also work in other community development projects that gave me a lot of ideas of how to approach this difficult topic because it's related to a lot of a stigma. So they helped me to help me to have a different view about it. They also gave me a lot of resources of how to approach this with the community. And finally, they helped me to see how to create design um, in this context, because usually one thinks about design in terms of technology or probably applications or graphic design or fashion design, but working around policy design and program design is a different topic. So they helped me through that process. And the final thing I will say is um, the fellowship also gave me the opportunity to um, give this information to people who is actually implementing it. And that connection was thanks to the Tishman Center. I think the challenge is not so much a bit about being a fellow because being a fellow is a whole new set of opportunities and possibilities to reach out to different people who work in this space. I think probably the challenge was more related to the topic because there is a stigma around cannabis. People have different opinions about this. So sometimes talking with a person, an academic person, a person from the government, a politician is challenging around this topic. Um, but the Tishman Center gave me very good tools to make that happen, understanding that rejection or probably some sort of opposing might happen during that moment when I needed to reach out to different people. Um, I think the work with the center also helped me with this project in different ways. I also worked with the archive of the center. So I, that allowed me to learn about different projects and how those projects also approach complex problems such as this one. I think the first part is understanding there are different opinions about this topic. I have to acknowledge that. I have to acknowledge that many people don't believe cannabis should have been regulated uh, or legalized in the state. And I understand that part. I also faced a lot of opposition regarding how the licenses are being given. There are people in the industry that don't believe that the licensees should be people uh, that have faced incarceration. That's a very different approach that has the state in particular, but they think that probably this should be more like an open market. So that creates some sort of friction, to be honest. 
Um, but besides that, what I learned is when I face that rejection, I try to build on the things that we had in common and not so much continue talking about the things we didn't. Um, that's something I also learned here is how to con contribute in diversity. That's a very important learn learning from the Tishman Center as well. I'm, there are many things. I think the first one that comes to my mind is that there are many people working around this topic and they have been doing this for many years and probably I didn't know because I didn't have that visibility. But I learned from, from instance, one of the first dispensaries that opened here in, the, in New York had also been working with homeless people and also around uh, food insecurity in the Bronx. So that taught me how social organizations can also transition to a market like this one, the cannabis market. I also learned uh, un unexpectedly that entrepreneurism is a long path, um, but it's also a path that gives people self-actualization and reparations. I never thought about it, like this is a big learning here. And I think that for someone who has faced trauma, violence, to become a business owner is a whole new story. It's a new way to start their lives over and to basically think about themselves in different ways. So there is a connection about business, this social component, and also community building. I had a personal relationship with many of the communities. For instance, I partnered with Canna Bronx, we basically gave the project to them. They are going to implement it. They are raising funds for it. I also contributed with the Bronx Community Development Initiative. They also have these projects around um, economic revival in the Bronx, and they are trying to figure out what are other economic um, income sources that they could implement in the community. And finally, I also heard about the stories of many people from this community to, to learn more about how they want to become probably owners of dispensaries or farmers of cannabis or uh, retailers in any of the supply chain options. So I, I gain a lot of connection um, and I also feel having this human way to um, contribute with people um, is one of the main ways in which I, I've been able to learn from them and build with them. Otherwise, it's just a structive relationship where I just get information and I don't give anything back. So I think that's a very important part of this project so far. I gave this project to Canna Bronx. Basically, they are raising funds. Um, and what we plan to do is to continue talking with people who want to apply for licenses and comply with the regulation, which is basically being previously incarcerated because of cannabis possession charges. And what we are also doing right now is starting working with part of the people who want to apply to, okay, let's create business plans, let's create an investment proposal, let's create the concept for your dispensary. So we are continuing doing that and I'm volunteering for that with them still. One of the most important parts of becoming a fellow is understanding the responsibility of the work that we do with the community. We go to communities, we ask them to share their problems with us, we ask them to gain access for their lives. So we basically have to be mindful of the conditions that they live, the challenges they face, and at the same time, be very mindful of giving them back something for their time because they are opening their hearts and their stories for us. We need to help them in return. I think that's a very important responsibility that we, that people that work or are part of the of academia have to have to humanize those communities. It's not just like an object of a study, they are our partners and as partners, we need also to give something in return and help them grow, help them become uh, better, help them learn what they need to learn. And if we don't know together, we can learn together with them. So that's also the mindset 
that I think we need to include in this kind of work.